Welcome to the back row where it's always midnight. I'm Diana Genta. Welcome to the back row where it's always midnight. Welcome to the back row where it's always midnight. I'm Diana Genta, coming to you from my porch where I can get some fucking privacy. Sadly, that means you're probably gonna hear some neighborhood noise. I apologize, I'll minimize it where I can. Call it realism, right? <sighs> Fritz the Cat was Ralph Bakshi's answer to the disnification of the animation industry. He thought it led to a stagnation of ideas, and he wasn't wrong. So he decided it was time for adult-level animation. Unfortunately, he seems to think that, that means racism, misogyny, and unfunny, quote, entertainment, as long as there's boobs and fucking involved. This is one of the really super naughty films my high school D&D group and I really wanted to see. This and Flesh Gordon. Now, we did get to see Flesh Gordon. We never got to see this one. So I went into this really fucking excited, really looking forward to it, telling everybody, oh my god, Fritz the Cat is next. <sighs> Halfway through, I didn't even want to do this review. I'm going off this unscripted live airplane noises, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going at this unscripted because, well, there's, there's a couple reasons. First off, if you saw my Pink Flamingos video, <laughs> you'll see that I had to do a lot of blocking of nudity. That took a long fucking time. Fritz the Cat is all about, hey, let's watch cartoon animals fuck. If, I, if I'd censored, if I'd taken out or blocked everything that YouTube wasn't going to show, there would literally be nothing left. Secondly, part of the reason I do these videos is I want to encourage you to watch them. I mean, even the ones that do in some way suck, there is something to feel affection for in there. And if I can bring that out and you decide to watch the movie based on, on my review, I feel that I've succeeded. I don't want to give that to Fritz the Cat. And I would never tell you not to watch a movie. I just don't be, want to be responsible for you going out and watching the movie. You know what? Rather than go through the whole explanation, I actually did a lot of bitching to my husband and my gaming friends about this fucking movie. I was partway through it at the time. Everything I saw after that just reinforced everything I already thought. I spent a lot of this movie watching this movie angry with my fingers literally up in the air. So rather than go through all that again and just sit here in front of you and talk and say the same shit I've already said, I recorded that because I was going to take notes from it. I had notes in here from the recording that I was going to use, but and then I was just like, fuck it, why don't I just use the recording? I don't think that this movie is deserves the dignity of even the amount of scripting and editing I usually do. So I'm just going to play for you the raw, candid conversation that I had with my husband, my daughter, and my gaming buddies that pretty much sums up how I feel about this movie. So being a conversation, it's going to be a little rambling. Yeah, that's how it goes. I'll probably add a little extra commentary on video here at the end because there's some stuff I want to address that we didn't get around to in the conversation. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Okay, so I want to, I'm just going to make some notes about what I don't want to forget. I want to forget to talk about how it's racist and not funny. I'd rather watch Pink Flamingos again. And I think the way I'm actually going to record it, Pink Flamingos, is that Sean and Ben Aaron come strap me down to watch it. And I definitely want to do that now. You know, and I had to strap my ass in to see that. Um, what else was I... Sean and Benny. I haven't talked to him yet. I'm going to ask him. Benny? From Rocky. What else was I talking about? What else was I, was I saying? You were talking about how the rotoscoping in the background... Yeah, the rotoscoping in the background was, was, was innovative. Um, the recording of the voices from actual real conversations heard on the street was was groundbreaking. And it gives, like, just, like, here in this very natural, like... What's what I'm looking for? Can't, very candid, you know, voices talking about stuff. And then they animated to that. You don't have to worry about, like, getting a bad take or something. Right, that's where we get getting bad takes. You're just recording over something you recorded that you already liked, and you take what you like. Yeah, because it's... But then they juxtaposed it. And then it's... But, all this bullshit. Yeah, but some of it... Yeah, like one of it was, like, construction workers talking. Okay, they were just setting a scene for New York. It's just the pre... Um, like, the intro to the movie. Right. Um, like, pre-credits. Um, but then, yeah, the scene with the... The black people are fucking crows. 
and uh, the scene in the um, in the bar where they're talking about legit race concerns, race problem concerns. They're going on right now, and they just use that as background noise to animate, you know, this dude reaching over and grabbing this chick's tits and sticking his hand way up her skirt. Right. The cops are pigs, which is kind of funny. <laughs> the cops are played totally as fucking goofballs. But yeah, I, and oh, I was also telling you that I, I'm a huge proponent of anything can be a joke if it's funny enough. Right. If it's like a rape joke, it's gotta be really motherfucking funny. And none of this was funny, like, at all. And the humor should be punching up. Always. Well, humor should be punching up, yeah, but even if you're going to punch down, it can be done. I'm at least willing to give it a pass for these reviews if it's at least funny. Right. You know, if you've got a point and funny is, if it's funny enough, then funny becomes the point, not the punch down, right? Right. But even then, yeah, but they're punching down and not even fucking funny. Right. All the whole movie's like, oh, look, the cop cartoon pig has a dick hanging out. Ah! You know, that's the whole point of this movie. I expect I wasn't expecting to like it. I was looking forward to watching this. Because the legendary Fritz the Cat. Legendary the Fritz the you, Cat. You know, it's gonna be dirty and hilarious. The counterculture thing that you love so much. Right. Yeah, I'm very into the counterculture. You know, but it's just not. It's just not funny. It's just not enjoyable. It's not just because it's it's racist. It's just it wasn't even all that funny before those parts showed up. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll appreciate the cleverness of the the realism tidbits that they pulled in. Right. But, fuck. Yeah, I mean, you know, that, that's like, that's like, you know, um, uh, Montgomery respecting Rommel. It doesn't mean you're not going to fight him. You can respect him for the good stuff he's doing. But he's still not, you know. Right. I mean, I'm going to watch all of it just so I can have, you know, a, a address it, but I don't feel like dignifying it with an actual review. You know, when I mock the, when I, when I make mock the movies that I, that I review, I mock them with a level of affection. Even Pink Flamingos, I found a level of affection for, mm -hmm. you know? So therefore the mockery was, and some of it was just to be silly and goofy, but some of it, you know, but there's actual critique in there, you know? But I can't, I can't mock this with affection. Right. So yeah, I mean, I, I guess right. I have to address it, you know? I wouldn't call it out where I see it, you know, that kind of thing, but right. I'm not gonna... You're not gonna give it the full review. No, and a lot of the reason I do these reviews too is because I want I want people to go watch these movies. You know, maybe I can't really actually justify telling someone, "Hey, you should go see Pink Flamingos," but you know, I do want to interest people in these movies. I don't want to interest anyone in watching fucking Fritz the Cat. Part of me thinks I should watch it on principle, and part of me is like, "No, I don't think so." <laughs> Dan already told me as much as I. I mean, I know. fucking own it, so. Right. You know, to anybody out there watching this review, if you must go see Fritz the Cat. The internet is full of semi-pornographic racism. You know, you can find it. If you really want to see Fritz the Cat all that bad, send me an email. I'll send you my copy because I don't fucking need it. <laughs> There's one scene in Pink Flamingos mm -hmm. that wasn't just a gross out. It really did disturb and upset me. And this is like over and over and over and over. Really? Yeah. Wow. I mean, not the same kind of thing, but like, you know... Same problem, right? And I wonder, I wonder if those people—I I don't know if those people being recorded do it, you know? If they were being recorded, or there's going to be in a movie. I don't know if they signed releases or anything. Right. You know, for all I know, you know, he's recording these black people. Just like, and I need—I can probably research this. But for all I know, he's recording black people expressing their honest, like, deep, heartfelt views about shit, and then he does this with it. Right. I'm gonna make you crows and have you sticking your hand up someone's vagina while you're trying to talk about important political shit? About how you're mistreated by the white man? As you're being mistreated by, by a white, white man? man. <laughs> it might be the highest grossing cartoon ever made. Like, fully animated feature ever made. Really? It might be. It's, it's way up there made a ton of fucking money. I don't know, lately? I mean, when was the last time you heard anyone talk about Fritz the Cat? Besides tonight. You know? So... Forever. Yeah, I don't want to spend more than five or ten minutes talking... Well, I don't, I don't want to spend more than ten minutes talking about it, really, in the video, because I don't want to... I don't want to stir up new interest in Fritz the right. Cat. I'm going to start Discord and log in here for my game. I mean, Rocky Horror managed to be shocking without being racist. 
sorry, pink flamingos manage to be shocking and offensive without being racist. You know, or, you know, cops sexually harassing chicks they're arresting is funny. Her, 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 look, she really wanted it after all. Rip my teeth on that one. Just remind me of a thing um, on Tumblr. So I posted like a news article of like, um, woman sets the person who raped her on fire. The what? The person who raped her on fire. And damn. But just all the reblogs of it were doing typical sort of thing, this typical defending thing. But like, oh well, he wasn't wearing flame like flameproof clothing. It's not her fault and stuff like that. Right, right. right. He must have been wanting it right. because he wasn't wearing. Yeah, he didn't stop, stop drop and roll. Clearly, it wasn't that big a problem to him. Right. Yeah, I've seen those. And like back to the cops thing, what you were saying about punching up. I mean, they're making fun of cops in this, mm -hmm. but that's a punch up. Right. right. They're Absolutely. walking around with guns. Yeah. It's, it, the things they're making fun of the cops for, like the things they're having the cops say, like like the um, ironic, brutal honesty, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like saying what people really mean rather than what they pretend to mean, that kind of right. thing. It's all like the cops being like, yeah, you know, we can just beat them up or, you know, you can feel up the chicks. I've already had plenty of that, you know, that kind of stuff. It's just like even back in 1971, they knew what was going on. Hey, Morgan? Please remember to take your eating medicine shortly. Yep. Thank you. Just the mean spiritedness of it. You know, pink flamingos had some sort of gleefulness. There's just something mean about Fritz the cat. Hey. Huh? Yes, can you hear me? You want pizza? It's a big you do hear me though, yeah? I did buy Ark. I'm very excited about it. We could. It's I great. need something to wash the taste of. That. But yeah, some of the stuff it did set the stage for cool adult cartoons. You know, Dude was actually was trying to make an alternative to Disney. It's all for kids. It's all the same formula crap. And he fucking did. You know, but I mean, some of the stuff he did was cool. Like they took actual fiction photos of New York City and traced over them for the backgrounds. So these obviously cartoon characters were walking around in these very naturalistic spaces. Um. And he took some, uh, like, dialogue, like, just people talking on the street, and animated to that in places, like some of the, like, non-main storyline scenes. But you can do that in 15 minutes, you know, you don't have to throw all this other stuff in. It's, it's on the one hand, like, kind of pandering to the 50s psychedelia counterculture movement, but on the other hand, it's like... Hey, you dumb fucks, you'll eat this shit up, won't you? You know, it's not... It's not parenting this as an insider. It's it's condescending to them. R. Crumb hated it. It was based on one of his characters, Fritz the Cat, obviously. Um, he hated the movie so bad, in the very next issue of the comic, he killed Fritz. <laughs> he killed his money-making character rather than even participate in it anymore. This will be the first movie that I reviewed that I wasn't able to dig up even a little affection for. And I and, and yeah, I was telling Rob too, you know, I didn't wanna don't wanna do the whole, you know, white girl buries her head in the sand, sand rather than address, you know, racism. But it's not like this is current racism. You know? Although some of the stuff like the the black people are talking about is still fucking motherfucking current. And it's a shame because I wanted to like it. You know, I really like the stylistic choices they made, like with the recording and the background, like rotoscoping. The content's important too. I mean, I wasn't expecting a whole lot of like deep plot development. You know, it's basically an excuse. Yeah, it is very much like Ren and Snoopy for that time period. Um, it's pretty much an excuse to go from, you know, fuck opportunity to fuck opportunity. There is some, but a lot of it's just like stupid and lame. You know, like Fritz telling the, the crow, like, you know, I feel deep personal pain over this race situation because my people have treated yours so badly always. Yeah, it's all about you, fuzzy kitty. 
it, it probably was, but you know, everyone, I don't know, it just seems like common sense that if someone's upset about something, you know, you don't say, yeah, but I'm more upset about this thing that happened to you <laughs> than you could be. It's not even just not making sense, you know, why should I be more upset about something than you feel about what I did to you? <laughs> right, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think a lot of that from Bakshi's point of view was, this sure as fuck isn't Disney, you know? And also, also I think he was, he was upset about having to draw, like, the fuzzy animals. It really is an animated fuzzy movie, really. Furry movie. Really. Well, well, the way it came about was, he approached our crumb, saying, I love Fritz the Cat, you're a genius, you know, we, I, we see eye to eye artistically, I would love to make a movie out of your stuff. I worked really hard to get Crumb to agree. A Crumb was just cantankerous, apparently. Um, I think actually the way it worked was his wife signed the contract. Legally, she could. So I don't think he ever even actually signed the contract. She did it. It's possible he just wanted more money. Yeah. I mean, the movie starts and you first see Fritz. He's bitching about all the posers in the park. Meanwhile, the person making the movie is totally a poser. He's exploiting the hippie scene, but if his point of view is what he's presenting in the movie, he's not part of it and thinks they're a bunch of fucking idiots. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just saying he's bitching about the posers and then clearly he does not get the scene himself. They just don't get it. Well, neither fuck do you. Maybe we should play something else while this is loading. So we, do we want to play Seven Days or do we want to wait for Ark? I do want to jump in here real quick and say that while I focus mostly on the racism in this movie, I think it's more egregious. There's a lot of <laughs> rape culture in here. I know it was the 70s, but it's, it doesn't age well. But a lot of it was just so careless. There's an entire scene of racism against Jewish people, which wasn't even from the comics. I don't know why they even felt, felt compelled to put it in there, but it's utterly horrifying. Um, but the misogyny is really, I mean, there's, do we have to do another movie with a fucking rape scene? Really? Can, can I get, can we get past those? It's not edgy. There's a character, Winston, who's in the movie in two entirely different places. Two entirely different characters. It's possible they're meant to be two characters, but she's got the same name and she looks the same. It's just her personality is entirely different. And they didn't give enough of a fuck about this chick to, to have any kind of continuity about her whatsoever. It's just... I don't know, it pissed me off. It also didn't help that Bakshi was having trouble keeping animators on the project. Um, a lot of the animators apparently that he wanted to work with quit because they objected over the material, whether it was the, uh, the pornographic aspects or the misogynistic or racist aspects. A lot of the animators he did manage to keep, is my understanding, were the ones who just wanted to draw boobies and fucking. So there's a lot of that in the movie. It does disappoint me that he couldn't make an adult movie for adults that wasn't just naughty shock factor. The scenes where he's taking actual real voices and animating to those voices, those actual candid conversations, that was fascinating. I'd love to see a movie about that. That would be adult. You know, the political commentary was super interesting. That's adult material. It may be shocking to young folks, but there's a lot that adults deal with and think about that ain't sex and isn't drugs. <sighs> you know, maybe, I mean, Waking Life is an adult movie. Animation isn't just for the shock value. Would the naughty factor have made it enjoyable enough in high school? Honestly, I don't know. We saw Flesh Gordon. We saw... Heavy metal, both of which have lots of boobs and, and some sex and stuff. A lot more in Flesh Gordon. We saw that once. Heavy metal we watched over and over, and it's still one of my most requested videos uh, from people of my era, and even people that I know, with fewer boobs and less sex. So I think there's a lot of potential for adult animation that Bakshi entirely missed. I had originally planned for there to be a scene in my Pink Flamingos review where a couple of my friends came over and tied me down and made me watch the video, especially the end part, but uh, they weren't able to make it. Watching Fritz the Cat, I was thinking this is where I really needed that bit, 
not from disgust, but just from boredom, where I wasn't angry. I was just bored. Thank you for joining me for Midnight in the Back Row. I'm Diane Agenta. Next episode, we're going to cover a movie I did like back in the day and that I did enjoy on rewatch, Fantastic Planet. Another cartoon, much more fun. See you at midnight. I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. Along with the sunshine, it's got to be a little pain sometime. Hey, if you liked this video, make sure you click subscribe or ring the bell or stroke the magic unicorn, whatever it is, wherever you're watching wants you to do in order to be notified of new videos. Speaking of new videos, make sure you check out my Patreon page. I've got everything I've made posted there, and a donation of even a couple or five bucks a month can really make a difference between me having to work my day job all the time, or having the free time to make you more fun shit to brighten your day. You can also find me on social media, and thank you for encouraging my behavior. Have a great day. I should probably get around to making that Instagram account, or Insta, is that what the cool kids are calling it these days? Anybody? Watching this movie is like sitting at a bar on karaoke night when your friend gets up and does a really racist rap and you have to sit there and listen to it.